so is the dawn. Morning awakes creation's song, and with the rising sun, war comes alive to carry on. The light, the light is shining on. The night, the night can overcome. The light, the light that burns so bright can take the wrong. Let strange arrow hit you. Every day people pray. They'll find the strength to make it through. While there is one who waits to fill their hearts with life and oh, the light, the light the shiny. The war of Gog and Magog. Yeah, remember that we looked at Ezekiel 36. Amen. Let's go to 37 and read a few verses quickly. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord mm. and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones mm. and caused me to pass by them round about. Mm. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, of, the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, mm -hmm. and ye shall live. Okay. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. And the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of the graves, I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. You remember that there was a time Israel was under one rulership. From Saul to David, David to Solomon, and Solomon to Rehoboam, that after Rehoboam, the kingdom split into two. Rehoboam went with two tribes, and Jeroboam went with what? Ten tribes. The one that went with Jeroboam is called the northern tribe, and the one with uh, so, uh, Jeroboam is called the southern tribe, southern kingdom. Now, the one in the northern kingdom, the capital became Samaria. And the one in the southern kingdom retained Jerusalem as the capital. So the, the one in the, because they have the northern kingdom, they have ten tribes, they retained the name Israel. The southern kingdom retained, that took the name Judah. After that, you start hearing in the year so, 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 so person started reigning over Israel. Then after a well, while, you will see in the year so 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 person started ruling over Judah. There were times the, the names of the two kings are similar. Sometimes they, they clash. 
So there were two kingdoms, okay, in Israel, and there was a time the first kingdom, the northern kingdom, went into captivity under Assyria, okay? They had been in captivity for a long time until Judah too committed so much sin that they too had to be going into captivity. Now, the two nations have been in captivity, but the northern kingdom were corrupted. The Assyrian king that took over the northern kingdom did something that was very heinous. He, did, he, he, he decided to mix them. He, he carried them out of their land, took them to other nations, and brought people from other nations to live on their land. He wanted to corrupt that seed. So that is why when you get to the New Testament, you will notice that the southern, the people of the southern kingdom, who are now called the Jews, actually when you hear the word Jew, it actually applies to those of Judah, the two kingdoms, okay, who are being ruled by the descendants of David, okay, because of the covenant that God had with David that at least at a time, his seed will be upon the throne. Okay, so the Jews always look down on the, Samar on the people of the north and call them Samaritans. Now, the word Samaritan in the New Testament became a derogatory word. Actually, if you call somebody a Samaritan, what you are calling him is that he's a low caste. You are saying it's mixed blood. You are not, it's not, it has never become hybrid. You are, you are no longer sure whether he's a descendant of uh, Abraham or not. Because the Samaritans are supposed to have been mixed. So the Jews looked down on the Samaritans. That was why when you get to that place in John chapter 4, when Jesus met that woman at the well and Jesus spoke to the woman, the woman said, ah, you are talking to me. I thought the Jews don't talk to Samaritans. Are you following me? But you will notice that God will not lose his own. But remember now, Israel is split into two. And they are coming back from captivity. Now they are coming to their land. God does not want that dichotomy to still exist. So continue what he said. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it. For Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Mm -hmm. Then take another stick and write upon it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. So what God is saying is merging the two nations together to become one nation. Amen. Say unto them, yes. thus said the Lord God, mm -hmm. Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, mm -hmm. which is in the hand of Ephraim, mm -hmm. and the tribes of Israel his fellows, mm -hmm. and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. Mm -hmm. And the sticks wherein thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. Okay. And say unto them, mm -hmm. Thus said the Lord God, mm -hmm. Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, mm. whither they be gone, mm. and will gather them on every side, mm. and bring them into their own land. Amen. And I will make them one nation in mm. the land upon the mountains of Israel. Amen. And one king shall be king to them all. Okay. And there shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. I just want us to notice that he moved from physical to spiritual. The physical is that they will be one nation. They will march together. They will be one. But the spiritual is that their sins they will start hating their own sins and they will go through a spiritual revival. All right? Amen. That spiritual revival is what the next process. They've gone through uh, reconciliation. If you, if you are somebody who monitors contemporary prophecies and events, you will notice that and the, uh, the Jews don't say, they don't call anybody Samaritan again. They are all Jews. Everybody's a Jew now. Okay? 
Whether you are from the northern kingdom or they have accepted that all of them are Jews. You know, the one that surprised me is that even the blacks, the Ethiopian Jews are integrated into the society. They bring them from Africa as long as they are Jews, even if they are dark-skinned, as long as they are Jews, they integrate them in society. As soon as they come, they give them houses, they give them things so that they can be back into the society. Which is slightly strange. Many other nations don't do that. Amen. Because this is unique about them. Now, the other aspect is the spiritual aspect. Where they will have what is called spiritual rebirth. And they will recognize the true king. Now, if you remember when we are reading Ezekiel 36, there is a portion there that God said, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. He now said, listen, it is not because of you that I'm doing this. It is because of my holy name. How many people remember? He said, I'm doing this only because of my holy name. He said, now, because I've said it, I will do it. All right? So you will think that because he said he will do it and all that, all the Israel will just lay, sit down, and God will just do it. No. He said, but for me to do it, you will have to ask me to do it. Now, how can I come to you and say, I need Never queen, if I don't agree that I have malaria in the first place. Are you following me now? Amen? If I don't recognize that I need a doctor, I won't look for a physician. So God must bring them to a situation where they will know they need help. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, mm. nor with their detestable things nor with any of their transgressions. Yes. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places yes. wherein they have sinned mm. and will cleanse them. Mm -hmm. So shall they be my people and I will be their God. Amen. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. You, do you understand what it means? When he said, David, my servant, shall be king over them, he's talking about a unification and that the proper triple veil anointing will be on top of them. Prophet, priest, and king. The covenant of David will be restored. And for the covenant of David to be restored, it means that everything about that covenant will be restored. But that's a jump from where they are now. If you see, if a, if a typical Jew sees you praying to Jesus, he will laugh. They are talking to a, the son of a carpenter. But he, he was more than a carpenter. Amen? And he is more than a carpenter. Continue, brothers. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, mm -hmm. wherein your fathers have dwelt. Mm -hmm. And they shall dwell therein, mm -hmm. even they and their children, Amen. and their children's children forever. Mm -hmm. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. Okay. Yeah? It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. Mm -hmm. And I will place them mm -hmm. and multiply them. Mm -hmm. And will set my sanctuary in mm -hmm. the midst of them forevermore. Yes. Okay. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Now, oh, there is no way David can be king without the tabernacle being there. My tabernacle shall be with them. Wait a moment. Why did he use the word tabernacle? Why not temple? Now you can understand why he says it in the book of Acts. That I will revive again the tabernacle of David that was broken down. Amen. Continue. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Mm -hmm. Yea, I will be their God. Mm. And they shall be my people. Okay. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel. Hold on. Do you know the only reason why he's doing this is that so that the heathen will know. And when the heathen knows, the heathen will stop being heathen. 
and will come to the God love. God is a God of love. You see, the old, after all things, when you trace anything God is doing, you will find love at the end. You will find mercy at the end. Amen. Amen. You see, do you know all is after is that nobody in his image and his likeness will go to hell. Continue. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Mm -hmm. 38. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog. Now, God has made the promise, he has said it. Now, after the promise, he now wants to do, activate the process that that promise will be fulfilled. Set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Mm -hmm. And say, thus said the Lord God, mm. behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, mm -hmm. and I will turn thee back. Yes. And put hooks into thy jaw. Yes. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. I just want you to notice that if you read this verse, you will notice that this is a composite army. It's not just one army of a single nation. He said, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. That means that the insignia of their uniform will be different. The Russian, it, 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 multi, so many nations, it's going to be like a, 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 an amalgamation of different armies. Now we are talking about Israel. What's, what has to do with Gog and Magog now? That's where you must read the scripture with the mind of the spirit. Amen. Now, he said all sorts of armor, all of them handling swords. That means they are not mixing together because of peace. You don't use sword to establish peace. It's war. Continue. Persia, Ethiopia. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them. It means that somehow, for one reason or other, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya are not either culturally or geographically or genetically, they are not really part of them. But now they are amalgamating. The present name of the nation referred to as Persia is Iran. Look at the map. Can you see the area in before now? You see the area called Magog. That is the area now covered. Rosh and Magog. That's the area covered by that is now presently populated by the people we call Russians and the old USSR. Are you following me now? Praise the Lord. Now, for you to trace this, you have to go to Genesis. When the, the descendants of uh, 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 Noah. Are, are you following me? Okay, you get my point. Noah had three sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, if you go trace them, you will realize that when they started having children and the children started spreading abroad, there are those who settled in the area that called Magog, there are those who settled in the area called Mesh, there are those who settled in the area called Meshek, then there are those who settled in the area called Put. All those that are called Put there, they are the ones that they are mentioned, you know, they, they, they link them together, the northern Africa. Not the, they are from the from North Africa. Now go back to the script we are reading. Persia, huh? Ethiopia, yes, and Libya with them. With them, all of them with shield and helmet. All of them with shield and helmet. That means with their army, they sub, they they injected their army just like you have Ecomog and all that. They injected their army into this particular warfare. Yes, Goma and all his bands. Goma. If you go, Ma is Germany. 
Okay? And the house of Togama, Toki. Okay? Of the north quarters, north, northern to the Mediterranean. Listen, when the scripture is talking, it depends on the area the, 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 the prophet is focusing. The Mediterranean is the large, is what you call the great sea. So north to the Mediterranean, we call them north. South to the Mediterranean, we call them south. I hope you're getting it. Continue. Goma and all his bands, the house of Togama of the north quarters, yes. and all his bands, yes. and many people with thee. Yes. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Now, notice that, be thou a guard over them. So, one particular person will be like the, like the commander, he's the like, he's protector. Now, listen to me right now. You are either under the cover of the U.S. or you are under the cover of Russia. There are two divisions. You are either part of NATO or part of Warsaw. Okay? I want to believe that later in the Sunday schools they will help me break these things down. Amen. It's part of what we must know. Why Christians should study Bible prophecy? Prophecy acquaints us with the most important subjects of the ages, God's plans for man. Studying Bible prophecy convinces us that there is really a God. Continue. The literal fulfillment of prophecy teaches us that prophecy should be interpreted literally. Continue. The study of prophecy prepares the Christian to avoid the deceptions of the many false prophets that are arising in our day. Mm -hmm. The study of prophecy promotes an evangelistic church. You see, when you study prophecy and you see the nearness of Christ, sometimes it, 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 it inst inspires you to want to talk to people more about the, 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 the salvation that is available in Christ. Continue. The study of prophecy tends to purify the believer. Prophecies offer confident hope in a hopeless age. Prophecies offer confident hope in a hopeless age. So you can see why we are studying this. It's not just a useless knowledge. Amen. It makes you know where you are. Look at this issue of Boko Haram. Boko Haram. Do you know that we have been praying about Boko Haram for how long now? Do you know how many times we have rejoiced that God has answered us and Boko Haram is still there? It can get to a point that you get to prophetic stalemate. And, and prophetic stalemate, if you do not handle very well, can lead to unbelief. That, does God really exist? God exists. But when you put Boko Haram problem, Al-Qaeda Haram problem, in context of prophecy, you realize that the Bible said there will be wars and rumors of war, earthquakes and disasters everywhere. He said, men's heart shall fail them for the fear of what is coming upon the earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But he did not say we should rejoice because wars are coming. He said we should pray against it. Then he is the sovereign Lord. He knows the one he will allow and the one he will not allow. Praise the Lord. So let's go back to Ezekiel that we are reading. That 30, we are now in 38. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself. Prepare for thyself. Yes. Now. Thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Now, listen, when I started, when I teach people in Bible study, I ask them, who is the, read things within context. Who is he talking to here? He's talking to Gog, the chief prince of Magog. You, you have to start from the beginning. When you, you keep focus on who is the subject matter. At this point, he's not talking anything about Israel now. 
Be prepared. And all the company that will assemble. That means God will not go alone. Some people are going to join up with him. And he is going to be like the protector over them. That is why the guys in Crimea were able to do what they did. You don't get it. The Crimea people, before they could do the referendum, and they did it without looking at anybody, Russian tanks were standing. If Ukraine, if the government of Ukraine from Kiev move an inch, Ukraine will be wiped out. You know what they did to Georgia? Georgia decided to stand. The war did not last more than two minutes. That is the meaning of thou shall be a God over them. Can you see prophecy? Continue. After many days, thou shall be visited. In the latter years, thou shall come into the land that is brought back from the sword. What is, which land is brought back from the sword? 36, 37 told us about the land that is being restored. Now, this is where chapter 36, 37 is connecting with 38. 